Good morning. I'm Dr. Dustin Clark. I'm the Extension Poultry Health Veterinarian for the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service. I'm here today to go over some biosecurity principles that you can use to protect your birds from disease. Now we're here at a, at a poultry farm. I will be putting on coveralls and boots before I go into the farm. As you can notice out here, we have a perimeter fence. The purpose of the perimeter fence, it's our first line of defense. It is separating the poultry farm from just the outside environment, I guess is one way to put it, the general, general public. We have a sign here that says authorized visitors only. It says help keep our birds healthy by observing strict biosecurity practices. Now the definition of biosecurity is basically any and all procedures that you can use to prevent the entry of infectious agents into your poultry farm or to prevent the spread of disease. One of the first things that we do when we pull up to a farm is put on coveralls and boots before going on to the premises and then we have a station here set up where that we will spray the tires and the undercarriage of the vehicle and we'll also sign in. We have a log for that so we can sign in and track. It is always a good idea to not have any contact with other poultry before going to a poultry farm. And that contact should be no contact within the last 48 to 72 hours, depending upon company policy. I'll be putting on my protective outerwear before I go on this farm. That includes a type of disposable headgear, a, head, a hairnet basically, disposable boots, and coveralls as outerwear. Now for those people who are working on the farm, the farm personnel, it is always a good idea to have dedicated on-farm clothing that you can wear, such as coveralls and, and some type of, of boot, usually a type of rubber boot. So I'll be putting these on and we'll be heading out to the farm. Here we are at the entrance, our, our gate. It's always a very good idea on a farm to have one entry gate that you can lock and secure. And you'll notice we do have, there is a sign on it that says we have surveillance cameras in place. We are here at the University of Arkansas Research Farm. But some type of signage where that you can depict to keep authorized, you only want authorized visitors on the farm. And that's to help keep the birds healthy. Uh, again, we've got it set up here with the biosecurity practices. Again, for definition, again, remember that biosecurity is any and all procedures that you can do to prevent the entry of disease onto a farm or to prevent the spread of a disease. Now, we've got a sign-in sheet where we will sign in. Okay, this is the farm visitor log. What we have on here is you put, you put your name, sign in your name, and then you have a date that you're visiting, the time in and the time out. And it'll say previous farm, if there's been any farms that you have visited. Now this is our service text typically right on this one. But again, it's a good idea not to go around other poultry for at least 48 hours before you go to a poultry farm. Now there are various types of disinfectant that you can use. The other thing is some farms will have a, a drive-through pan or that you can drive through that to disinfect the wheels. Others, you'll need to use a spray of some type. It's a very good idea. This basically just gives us a line of defense in addition to the perimeter fence, which keeps out unwanted visitors. This just gives us another line of defense. Make sure that when you spray the tires, you get them sprayed very well. You can see this is foaming up on it. Spray that wheel well real, real good. This truck has running boards, so I will spray along those as well, since I'll be stepping in and out. I'll spray my boots. Probably wondering why, and I'll show you here. As you'll notice here on the tire, the bo very bottom of the tire has not been sprayed. So what I will do is I will pull the vehicle forward just a little bit. That's why I disinfect my boots. Okay. 
And that way, as you can see, this part of the tire here is dry because there hasn't been any disinfectant on it. And that way I can spray the tire down fully. I'd like to introduce Chad. He's our own farm poultry manager. And he has a, a set of clothing that he has dedicated strictly to this farm. Doesn't wear those clothes anywhere else. Those are, they're cleaned and sanitized. We have a washer and, and dryer inside the office, which he uses to clean and sanitize those clothes. He wears these strictly on the farm, in and out of the houses. But even going into the house, and we'll show that, he will put on additional boots when he goes in there. We're here at the office. And before entry, since we have a lot of people coming in and out of this office, it's a good idea for any on-farm office to have a disinfecting station. And with this one, we have a preliminary disinfecting station that's using a liquid disinfectant. And we'll step in that. Before moving into the building, In the building, we have a secondary disinfection, and it's a dry bleach product. This is our farm manager stepping in there first. Typically, we'll step in there. Now, you see we have a barrier here. This is just a simple barrier of tape. It's just a line. Now, this shows the clean and dirty. This side of it is dirty because it's towards the farm. And then we step over after we've done the dry bleach, this is the clean area. Here we have our entry into the poultry building. We have a sign on it, and you notice this one says foam boots before entering. This is another method of disinfection. We have other doors into these buildings, but they say do not enter. It is important to have one entryway that you can keep locked. This, this prevents a couple of things. It prevents someone from inadvertently going into the building and can prevent theft of birds. And this is a little separate area that we're going to go into. It does not go directly into where we have the birds. And we'll have what's called the Danish bench system that we'll show you. And we're going to go in there. I'll have Chad go in now. What we do here is we spray some foam on this concrete pad. This allows us to disinfect our boots or our plastic boots or rubber boots, whichever you have. And then we go into this small entryway here. What we'll be doing here, we sit down on this bench, we'll be putting on a secondary set of boot covers. Or, in the case of Chad, we'll be putting covers on the boots. And we will step across with those boots on. He's going into, he has a set of rubber boots that he wears. And these boots, you can have these on your farm, it works real well. These boots stay in this area here. They're only used in this poultry house. Every other poultry house has a different set of boots. And you can see here he's stepping in. He's got his boots on. He's stepping into some more of the dried bleach product. These boots have not been anywhere on the farm. They're coming right out of the box. And then I will disinfect them again in this dry bleach product. This is just another layer of defense of biosecurity to protect your birds. Okay, we're looking at the, at the birds. These birds are about two weeks old. And you can see they have grown tremendously from when we first saw them as day old chicks. One of the best practices is go through the poultry house, walk down it and back through, picking up any dead birds. Uh, give you a chance to evaluate the birds to see what they're doing. You should have some birds eating, some birds drinking, some birds resting, some birds milling around. As you can see, we've got all of those in this house here. We've got birds over here at the feeders. That we have right up here, we've got some eating. A few birds drinking at the nipple drinkers. And then some birds just kind of hanging out. So I'm going to turn this over to Chad, and he's going to go over some more practices that you can do that are best management practices. All right, so the first thing that I like to do as I'm entering into the house, I like to look at the distribution of the birds. I'd like to see them evenly distributed throughout the house. Uh, as you can see here, 
uh, in the area that we are is quite different from the area uh, beyond that, and and that is because we've we've uh, we've disturbed them in this area by by coming in. So it's a good idea to take a peek in before you ever enter into the area. As, as Chad mentioned, we want even distribution of the birds, as you can see in the far end of the house. Once we start walking through them, a lot of them will move, but it gives you a chance to, to look at the birds individually. You want to look for anything that is abnormal, such as a bird just sitting there when you walk past it and not moving. And you can see they are kind of moving along with us. If you think that you hear some type of respiratory sound, what you can do is stop. Many times you can clap your hands or you can whistle and they will quieten down and then you can, you can listen really good. Now you notice how they got quiet. This gives you a chance to listen intently to hear if you, to see if you can hear any sounds of any respiratory distress. Now at this age and size, it's really pretty easy to restrain a bird. What I like to do is part of biosecurity and it goes along with being a veterinarian, but you can do this as the farm manager just as easily. If you see a bird that's just not acting like you think it should act, it's a good idea to catch that bird and just take a look at it. Now this bird was totally normal, we just caught this for demonstration, but I like to just give them the once over, look at them, how are they feathering out, what do the eyes look like, the ears, listen to them, see if I hear any sounds, you can feel the, you can just feel the, the gain, weight gain on the bird, of course I like to palpate the crop. See if there's food in it, which there is. Just give the bird the once over. Overall, this bird you can see is, is chirping. It's fairly, it's contented. Doesn't mind being handled at this stage. And it basically, we've got a normal broiler chicken. You can see its movement is normal. It's wanting to get back to the group. But part of disease prevention is looking for early symptoms and signs of disease. So you look at the overall activity of the flock, the house. As Chad mentioned earlier and I did, you want them evenly dispersed, evenly distributed. It shows that they're comfortable. You want to watch them, make sure they're acting normal, eating, drinking, walking around, resting. If we have birds that are crowded in a huddle, or if we have a single bird out by itself, just check that out to make sure that there's nothing abnormal there. Because you can tell by the behavior of the bird some very early signs of diseases. Taking off the boot here, exit back over, put this in the disposal, you can. Again, here we have, we're in the dirty side. This would be the clean side on this side. And then we'll spray down some disinfectant Stepping in that, disinfect those boots again. It's just an added layer of security. And securing the outer door. And as you can see, we're back out here on the farm. These are the boots that were put on when we came on the farm. Many farms will have two sets of rubber boots. Oftentimes they're different colors, one color for inside the house and a different color for outside of the house on the actual farm premises. And that works really well. Or you can use disposable boots. Or in the case if you have dedicated clothing, then and boots you use that on the outside and then changing into the boots on the inside. Another aspect of biosecurity is rodent control. Here we have a bait station. As you can see it's locked. We put a type of rodenticide in there so that the, the mice and rats can get in there and eat that. 
not get in there where the birds are. Anytime you have a poultry farm, you've got an area with lots of feed, water, and warmth. So it's a perfect place for rodents to get. So you do need some type of rodent control program. And we have these bait stations located at each house. In fact, there's multiple stations along the house. If, we, if you look down the side here of this house, you can see that there are multiple stations down through there. You'll notice that we have a road coming in between these houses and we don't have a lot of tree, we don't have any trees. We want to keep down the vegetation because those are hiding places for wild animals as well as for rodents. So keep that area clean and clear around these houses. Another aspect of biosecurity is proper dead bird disposal. Now there are numerous methods of dead bird disposal. Some farms you can use incineration, others you can use burial, Others we use some type of composting. And we've got two types here. We can have a compost bin where the birds are placed in there. They're layered in, layer of dead birds, layer of, of, uh, of chicken litter. And then that pile, you just layer that pile up and then you turn it in two weeks. And then they go. Here we have a composter. This is an eco drum type of composter. There are other types out there as well, I believe. And what happens with this, we put litter in this and put wood shavings and then dead birds are put in, they're cycled through. This is on a timer and it spins. And what basically the concept of all of this is the birds compost. And that is to just break them down. And of course kill any organisms that's in there with them, any types of diseases. Now some organisms will get through, some of the bacteria and things like that. But composting them is to render inactive diseases. It's a good method of bird disposal. You don't want to do things like just leave them out in a pile for wild animals to disperse. Uh, if you use a bucket or some other type of system to pick up your dead birds, you want to clean and disinfect that bucket as well. As you can see in the video, these birds look really, really good, which is a testament to the practices and procedures and the protocols of biosecurity. I'm Dr. Dustin Clark with the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. Cooperative Extension Service. I'm the Extension Poultry Health Veterinarian, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.